I am proud to address the veterans of foreign wars. I spoke to you when I was a presidential candidate, and this is the fifth time that I have spoken to you, uh, your national convention as your president. And every time, I've been honored to meet with members of the VFW. I come away from these meetings with my inspired by your love of country, by your devotion for duty, and for the example you set for those who wear the uniform today. In 2006, as you well know, the situation in Iraq was deteriorating. Some back in Washington said the war was lost. They were willing to give up on the mission. They were willing to leave a struggling democracy to its own fate. The failure in Iraq could have spread chaos across the region, emboldened Iran, emboldened the terrorists, and given them a a new base from which to launch operations against American allies. I believe this would have been a disaster for America, and so did the men and women of the VFW. Early last year, after consultations with our commanders and the Commander-in-Chief must always listen to the commanders and not the latest opinion poll. I ordered a surge of forces into Iraq. I remember briefing the leaders of the VFW on my decision. Since the surge began, violence in Iraq has dropped. Civilian deaths and sectarian killings are down. Slowly but steadily, political and economic progress is taking place. Iraq's a rising democracy. Iraq's an ally against these extremists. And our troops have become home, begun to come home under our policy of return on success. We all look forward to the day when even more of our troops come home. And the VFW understands that the only way to bring them home is with victory. <laughs> to ensure that we have the capabilities prevail in Iraq and Afghanistan or wherever the terrorists make their stand, we've transformed the United States military. Our branches of the military are working together better than ever. We more than double funding for our Special Operations Command so our forces can hunt the terrorists no matter where they hide. We've increased the number of unmanned aerial vehicles in our arsenal. We're moving American forces from Cold War garrisons in Europe and Asia so they can deploy rapidly anywhere in the world. We're going to increase the size of our ground forces. We'll make our troops more lethal and more agile so they can remain on the offense against the enemy. America's future leaders must remember that the war on terror will be won on the offense, and that's where our military must stay.